Hi everyone, this is Crash and Twice, and today we're gonna continue with the forestry mod. What I have done here is I disassembled the sleds with the metal bars, which are carried by those, to uh, get them ready for paint. What I would like to do is because I like the the metal part, I like just to paint this part black on both of them, but leave the metal with a machined the rear side on the top here as it is. So I'm gonna just mask them up. I got myself a couple hooks made here which I use for, for painting and then we're gonna paint it. So I'm gonna mask this up and then I'm gonna go in the garage and get this painted. All right, Jim at the mill, and uh, I'm gonna drill three holes in each of the slats here, and then I drill them out for six millimeters, so we're using 5.9 millimeter or 5.8 to make this a very tight fit. Now I'm gonna do the next one here, and then we're gonna go to the drill press and drill them out. Okay, so here we have the drill press. Now let's throw those three holes out. I'm gonna chamfer those, and after chamfering is done, I'm now gonna go over to the assembly table. So, it's uh, 48 hours later, everything is cured from the painting. And I also applied some stickers. I got those one here at a local store and I printed those one out on my label printer and now we're gonna install that. I already installed this other side here and uh, this one goes onto this side. So we have here, we have the, the carrier which we drilled the holes out. We have two lock nuts, two springs, two washers, two bushings, and two bolts. Let's get this assembled. All right. Next step is I'll get those slides out, the bearing slides. We're gonna put them temporarily on that guide rail and this way you can all assemble it and then push the whole thing in there and we know we're all 100% aligned. So let's get this out. I line this up here like so then get a little bit out just enough for the plastic to be on there. Number one is in. Number two, let's put the bumper back on here. So they're, they're set in like this. And then we get some M3 screws and put that on. And then we have all eight of them in. And then we can install it into the poster mod. And again, same procedure here. Go a little out here until I hit that part. All right, looking good now. So, all right, so these are installed. So make sure install bumpers until we don't need them so they don't slide us out. Move this thing and then accidentally forget about it. And those things shoot out and then I have my bearings all over the place here. So, before we can make a, a cam or a lever for our rod ends, we'll have to make some mounting solution here so we can integrate a bearing. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use this scrap piece of uh, aluminum and I'm gonna mount this piece onto the guide rail and then I can uh, put in the center here a bearing and we can attach to that the lever or the cam. So that's the plan. So I'm gonna draw this up and that will all work. Okay, so we're at the mill here. I marked the small holes and then the hole for the bearing. I decided to do the little holes first so I can mount it in and get a better measurement and let's throw those out. Now I'm 
gonna check it and then I verify that the other hole which I still need to do for the bearing is at the correct position. So let's clean this up. Okay so I have mounted that little plate I just drilled out and I took uh, the measurement from the furthest distance here this one goes so from here that's the furthest goes I took the measurement right here from that post to that carrier took the center line I made a mark here so that would be the center between this and that to give me some adjustability I will not only drill one hole in here but I will drill another one next to it because I do not know when I have a lever which I marked already here which goes behind it I don't know if I, if I have enough room on the bottom it goes behind it to have the full 60 uh, millimeter for that motor or 63 what it is once I have a lever in here I will be connecting the bottom one on this motor sled and further up I'm gonna connect that the magnet sled to it this allows me to have a less distance travel also need shorter springs and so for this one up here will move less than this one on the bottom now I'm gonna drill the holes for the lever mounting plate I'm gonna make three holes in here this way I have some adjustability if I need it and if not well then I have some extra holes right there and then we're gonna tap them for M6 okay on the drill press here well, it's gonna drill those holes out to M5 alrighty let's and let's tap them on the vise all right got it in the vise got my little brush here got a cutting fluid let's do those three holes here tap them and two passes on each hole sometimes it works with one pass you just have to have a feel for it that went smooth and now we're gonna give it a very little chamfer here just enough to clean that edge up on both sides you can feel if you did a good job just feel very smooth all right here we are now we got three holes to mount the lever to we can select whatever works best for us and down the line i'm gonna machine this here out so that the top rod end has a little bit more space because we don't need this much of a material between that m6 hole and the bottom of the plate so but we're going to go over with the machine here a little bit just al along that area here right here come up out up out so that's the plan here so let's see how it fits and if it works okay so now we're gonna mill out the two sections from that lever mounting bracket It's going to turn it around and then we do the other side. Take a look here. Yeah, looking good. Okay. And here we go. Let's take it out. All right, I'm going to deburr that and then uh, sand it down and then uh, go on to the next step. Mill this piece out for bearings. So first, here's two bearings. They are five millimeter bearings and this one has to be as thick as that so I have to take a little bit off and then I'm gonna press fit those bearings in there and then when I'm gonna, gonna drill holes in here and in here okay I put the lever into the vise and we're gonna drill a hole now we're gonna change over to an end mill so we can get a hole in for a 30 millimeter bearing without changing any of the setup here and now while I'm having it already in here I'm gonna thin it a little bit out take a little bit off the depth okay so that's so far so good so we have the lace and I'm gonna make a spring rod 
Uh, this is the rod I have here from an old printer and I cut that piece off but, I, but I, in half and the other half already mounted into the chuck and what we're going to do here is we're going to take uh, that's a six millimeter rod we want to be at 5.89 or 5.9 to cut a thread on it so let's reduce that it's just a hair, so what I'm going to do is I drive the sled onto the rod, like so, move it back, and now we correctly add it. On the end, I'm going to turn that end down a little bit, just a hair, so it's all smooth and good looking. Moving backwards, and I prepped an old chuck I had from my old mini lathe, and I mounted a M6 by 1.0 pitch flat into that chuck. Now I have a taper in here with MT2 taper. It's uh, alive, so it turns. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cutting fluid on here and into here. Now I put this on my life taper here, move it on. And now I'm no I'm hundred percent straight here. And now I can cut a start cutting a thread on it. And then I also know I'm hundred percent center. So what I do is I hold that chuck, turn this piece over it, move my life center forward while I'm doing this consistently. Now I can back out. And now, we have a wonderful machined, not machined, but thread here. Now I'm going to clean this up, run the sanding sponge over it, and then I'm going to do the other side. Okay, have the other side done now, and here's our other side. I made a longer thread on one side for a coupler, a shorter thread just for a nut and a washer. Okay, here we are. Here's our Forster mod. I already installed the rod in here. This is connected to the sled from the joystick. And the other end is connected to the lever. This is our bracket we made. And it has two M6 threaded holes. This hole is closer to the axis and as such it reduces the amount it moves back and forward and that's what I wanted that lever for. So I have made here a mock-up of a spring system. These are, this is just a standard threaded M6 rod, a coupler and this is the rod we machined in the lace or we made in the lace and uh, I'm gonna install this right now. This is just an uh, a spacer so to speak for right now and this will not be the final uh, version here. This is just a mock-up to prove the concept that it works. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to install that rod On the other end we just need a bolt in the washer so it doesn't scratch us the plate here. And that goes on like that. And 
and now this rod here will move the steel plate in front of the magnet like so you can see the steel plate moving here but, but far less then we have a movement down here on the motors. And that's exactly what we want because we want the magnets to engage as much as possible. And that's why this lever is for. Okay, so from here on, we're gonna go and our joystick is pretty much centered right now. So it moves freely in any direction. We haven't done the roller axis yet, this is just for the pitch right now. But it moves and stays in the position it, it should. There's no spring load right now. Because that plate and the spring move along. So now, I'm going to switch the magnet on. Bam, it's on. Now, we have a spring load. And it goes back into the position. So we locked our, our first trim, so the trim is locked right now. And it will always return back to where we locked it at because this is the new zero. Now I'm gonna switch the no now I'm gonna switch that off here. Let's move to the front so it's better visible. Now we switch that off. The magnet disengages and we are free to move around. And the same, so if this is your new position here, and you lock it with B button, it's locked. Now we can work the, the, the springs as we need to. We have a spring force here. We work against it, but it goes back into the position where it, where it has been. We unlock it and it's free to move again. And the motors, they're gonna be all uh, controlled so that we can move the, uh, the stick forward or backward electronically. That's why we have the motors for. They don't have any other purpose, except from that position where we lock it or where it's unlocked, it can be moved into any direction via electric motors. The separate motors. Well, I think that turned out quite good. As I said before, this will be replaced. I will try some uh, ideas I had with the Whirlpool cams to make a more beautiful spring system there. If it works out, that would be great. I do have some room below here where I can integrate that. Let's see if we can get this going. Next time we work on a, a poster mod. And if not, then something similar like this will be the second choice here. All right, I think we got a lot done today. I'm very happy with the outcome so far. And that's it for today. So next time I'm checking out the Windwing USB 3 instrument display number one. I just got it in and that video is coming soon. So please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. Don't forget to check out my Discord channel and visit my website at crashbetwice.com for more info on this and other projects. If you would like to support this channel, you can buy me a nice cup of coffee from the link below or on my website. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope I earned a like from you. Crash Me Twice, out.